Each month I showcase my solar generation data, often telling the story of how effective solar panels can be. But today I tell a slightly different story, one of seasonal variation. At this time of year, with the sun getting lower and the days getting shorter, generation really starts to drop off. With lots of overcast weather this month, there's no escaping it, October has been a poor month for solar generation. But there's one reason why, in the grand scheme of things, this really doesn't matter that much. Keep watching for all the analysis. I'm fortunate enough to have a sizable system consisting of 32 panels across various orientations. That comprises of 16 south, 5 east, 5 west and 6 north facing. This makes just over 14 kilowatts of total capacity, or 12.6 after inverter limitations. The estimated output of the entire system is around 10,700 kilowatt hours. The system wasn't always this size, it's been built up over time in three phases. Here is a breakdown of each element. Phase 1 occupies the south facing side of the roof. It's just over 5 kilowatts peak and it was installed back in October 2023. It consists of 12 Sunflower Maxion 3 430 watt panels, paired with Solar Edge optimizers and a 5 kilowatt Solar Edge inverter. Phase 2 is formed on the east and west aspects of the roof. It's 4.4 kilowatts peak, it was installed back in October 2024 and consists of 10 REA Fusion 2 440 watt panels, 5 on the east and 5 on the west. Each one is paired with an N-Phase IQ8 HC microinverter. The final phase of the system occupies the garage and north side of the house. It was activated in May 2025 and consists of 10 REA Fusion 2 450 watt panels. There is 4 on the south side of the garage, 4 on the north side of the garage and 2 on the north side of the house. These also have N-Phase IQ8 HC microinverters. With that in mind, let's look at some data starting with that 5 kilowatt south array. We produced 235 kilowatt hours, which is a massive reduction from September. In fact, it's only 45% of September's total. And looking at the daily output, you can see why. We only really had one good sunny day, and uh, the rest, well, we had some mixed days, but uh, a lot of those days were dark, overcast, or wet days. So it's really hurt our generation. It was a similar story for our east and west array, producing 123.8 kilowatt hours, which constitutes 42% of September's total. As you can see on the bottom right, the generation was a bit less uniform as shading starts to come into play. The garage and north facing array produced a total of 133 kilowatt hours across the month, which is around about 45% of September's total. You'll see looking at the distribution that the north facing panels all produced just over half of what the south facing counterparts did. This gives us a distribution of the south facing side giving us 48% at 235 kilowatt hours. The garage and north facing aspect was in second place at 27% with 133 kilowatt hours and the east and west facing aspect with a little bit more shading producing just 123.8 which is 25%. That one sunny day that stood out so dramatically on the initial results for the south facing array was on the 6th of October. That was 25.6 kilowatt hours, which is not bad. That's actually 86% of September's best. And as you can see, it's not a completely sunny day. There were some gaps in the sunshine, but generally speaking, it was a decent sunny day, head and shoulders above anything else this month. The highest generation day for the east and west aspect was the 6th of October once again. This was 55% of September's best at nine, just over 9 kilowatt hours in total. As you can see with the comparison there with October's at the top and September's at the bottom, it's far less uniform in October. There's a much greater distribution towards the east where that has less shading. In the west side, you can see that there's quite a bit more shading now where the chimney comes into play. And for the garage and north facing aspect, the result was just under 9.5 kilowatt hours on the 6th of October. That's 68% of September's best. Although the south facing side was relatively close, a little bit lower of course due to the, the lower sun position and the shorter daylight hours, but, but there's not too much to choose between the October and September results. It's the north facing side on a sunny day that didn't do so well. And here's the reason why. 
You're going to have to forgive the fact that the viewpoints are ever so slightly different, but it's close enough to demonstrate my point. On the left is the 12th of September at 2pm. On the right is the 24th of October at 2pm. You'll notice that the sun position is quite dramatically higher in the September shot on the left versus the October shot on the right. And what this means is that there's direct sunlight shining on the north facing side, which doesn't do so now towards the end of October. Let's have a look at the lowest generation, and on the south side it's a bit of a sorry story. On the 19th of October, the result of 1.67 kilowatt hours was only 38% of September's lowest. Once again, it's a very similar story for the east and west facing aspect, which produced 1.43 kilowatt hours, which is only 36% of September's lowest, and for the garage and north facing aspect, it was 1.51 kilowatt hours which is only 39% of September's lowest day. So that was the 19th of October, which meant that combined with the south facing side, that only gave us a total for the day of 4.61 kilowatt hours. If despite some poor results, you have been enjoying this or found it useful, please give me a like. I promise there is some good news in here coming up shortly, which actually puts all this in perspective. And let me know what level of reduction you've seen between October and September and how it's compared to previous years or targets. Looking at our result versus our targets, it doesn't look for great viewing at first glance. We're 73 down on our PV watts targets and even further away from our installer targets with our measly 235 kilowatt hours for the month. But here's the good news. If you have a look at the actual results column in green, scroll down to the bottom and you'll notice that our annual generation figure that we have here is 5,415. So already with two months to go, we've actually exceeded both our PV watts targets and our installer targets. That's how good our spring and summer has been. So one slightly disappointing month doesn't ruin that. It's a similar story for our east and west side, with October's generation being poor. In fact, if you compare it to the PV watts targets, it's our second worst month that we've had all year. But once again, scroll down to the bottom of the actual results in the green column, and you'll see that we have already surpassed the PV watts targets and both the installer targets, which bear in mind, the first one was too ambitious because it uh, uh, it didn't take all the shading into account for the uh, for the roof itself. So the fact that we have already beaten that shows what a strong position we're in and uh, what fantastic weather we've had. For the newest phase, the garage and north facing aspects, we can't do the same thing because we don't have data for the first four months. We've got data from May onwards. Uh, but curiously, actually, for October, we didn't miss the targets. We, we actually just about managed to achieve the target by seven units. Uh, so that was unexpected, uh, but good nevertheless. It actually keeps up the 100% record of meeting targets. So that's, that's very good news. Here is the combined total for the month. At 491.8, it's been a month to forget. But look at it in the grand context of the whole year and dare to dream about where we could have been if we had phase three installed prior to May. That's uh, That really would have been quite a special year. Looking at net import and export, I genuinely started the month thinking, which way is it going to go? Are we going to import more or export more? The answer is quite resounding import with a net grid usage of 368 imported thanks to importing a grand total of 591 and only exporting 223 this month. The Powell has estimated that we have saved £120 this month, but it doesn't take into account the free energy that we got from Octopus. We took part in four free energy sessions and we managed to use a grand total of 73.5 kilowatt hours. Uh, and we got that for completely free, so that was nice. It wasn't enough to save us. Uh, to, to give us um, a uh, negative energy bill uh, because we did a fair bit of importing uh, as we've just been through. Um, the importing was split because some of it was at 8.5 when we were from uh, Octopus Go and then some of it was at 7 pence well, because we switched to Octopus Intelligent Go. Uh, so that's the bulk of our 
uh, costs. We we do of course have the standing charge at forty seven pence. Uh, that works out to just under £15, and the export was only good for £33.45 this month. So total bill, just over £20.5. If you are looking into solar installations or expansions, I can offer £250 off at Eatable or £150 off battery installs. I also have a link for £50 bill credit if you want to join Octopus as an energy supplier and a code for £100 off a heat pump from Octopus should you wish to get one of those. All these help to support the channel too, so if you were to use one of these you'd be helping me out. A win-win! Despite October being disappointing, I hope this was informative nevertheless. I'm linking a playlist of solar generation for this year so you can see how this compares to previous months and how we got to these annual figures. May and June's were particularly incredible, so if you haven't seen them, it might be worth a watch. Thanks very much for watching this, and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.